Silicon Valley was once called a tech Galapagos for the unique blend of talent, money, technology, culture, and government R&D that led to the diverse species of tech entrepreneurs who then went on to found today's mammoth internet companies. The World Wide Web was invented by English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee at CERN, but it was commercialized in America. This time, however, is different. Web 3 is emerging at a time when technology tools and human capital are more distributed than ever. In 1993, as the web's pioneers were forging the first frontier online, half the world had never even placed a phone call. Now, more than two out of every three people on Earth has got a smartphone connected to the internet. So to build on science fiction author William Gibson, the future is already here, and its talent and technology are almost equally distributed. If Web 1 and Web 2 democratized access to information and then made it easier to meet and collaborate online, then Web 3 equips us with an even more powerful tool set, a tool set that allows us to earn money, own assets, and build wealth on a globally level playing field, decentralizing power and influence in the process. If the uh, spread of technology truly makes the world flatter, then Web 3 is going to be a steamroller. I personally have witnessed this global transformation firsthand. Since 2016, in fact, I've traveled to nearly 40 countries, visited every continent except Antarctica, <laughs> and met with local entrepreneurs, policymakers, business leaders, and everyday people. What has struck me most is how globally distributed Web3 innovation has become. For me, the airplanes I'm taking have become time machines, shuttling me to various futures, as I call them to Istanbul, where many citizens prefer to transact and store value in digital currencies and stablecoins, uh, to Singapore, the beachhead of Asia's burgeoning Web3 industry, to Hong Kong, which has recently opened up to this industry as well, to Thailand, where internet users are experimenting with Web3's tool set to bootstrap new jobs, uh, new kinds of opportunities to make money online. I've been to Dubai, where the government has made Web3 kind of the linchpin of a broader plan to attract global talent and capital. Now, of course, governments like those in Dubai can help create the conditions for Web3 to succeed. With other technologies, we've seen that kind of success. But ultimately, it's really up to all of us to make this happen. You know, Web3 is the internet's economic and cultural frontier. Now, some frontiers are for experts only, and some frontiers require vast amounts of capital or superhuman strength, whether it's climbing Mount Everest or journeying to Mars. But all frontiers present their share of risk and rewards. Throughout history, the most bountiful of frontiers have often been pushed by everyday people, or at least the ones brave enough or driven by circumstances to pick up their belongings and hit the dusty trail. Even the hardiest explorer needs a guide. So with humility, I hope that my new book, Web3, Charting the Internet's Next Economic and Cultural Frontier, proves useful. <laughs>